Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. We're back in the hospital and over the last few weeks, absolutely nothing has gone to plan. So this is our second or third attempt to try to get on to the next phase of treatment. There's a few things that we have to get done before, whoa, before we can do treatment. Kendall is just hanging out here, playing some games with her friends on the iPad. How you doing? Good. You look amazing as always. I love that purple hair. Thank you. <laughs> and Brandy's just kind of hanging out in her little nook back here, doing probably buying stuff online, you know? So before we can move on with the next phases of treatment, Kendall has to get another line placed in her chest. It's called a Broviac. Am I got, do I have that right? A Broviac. She has her port, which is a power port, uh, on one side of her chest. You guys have seen that. She's used that for all of her chemo treatments, all of her fluids, all of her uh, drugs and stuff up till now, but they have to add a second one this one, unfortunately, will be more of an external thing, and it has to get wrapped up, and it'll have bandages over it, which means she can't go swimming. She can't do a lot of things that she would normally like to be doing while that is there. Now, the reason for having two of them is for these next treatments, and it'll be there for the next five or six months, probably. So they want to be able to add fluids or um, morphine or whatever it is through one, and then run the immunotherapy, the chemo, the, those sort of things through the other one so they can kind of control things much more independently from one another. So that's the reason for both through these next series of treatments. So they'll come get Kendall here in just a little bit, take her down to surgery. They do have to put her under uh, to, to do that. And then they'll let the rest of the day kind of go a little bit of recovery from that. And then tomorrow morning we'll get started with the first round of immunotherapy. Before they come get her, I just wanted to take a quick opportunity to say thank you to all of you who continue to watch and comment and ask about Kendall and show your love and support and you know buying t-shirts and all the different ways that you guys are supporting us and showing us some love and care we we really appreciate and Kendall in particular really appreciates you can see obviously how well she's doing look at that beautiful smile let me see you're amazing I know. love that hair do you like the purple hair better or the pink hair that's a tough purple. one. Really? You like the purple better? Yeah, because the pink one is too crazy. It's too crazy? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, long. it's long. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have that one? And in it gets in my face all the time. Should we get that same one in pink then? Yeah. Think so? Okay. I like you with that length, Kendall. It looks really pretty. Yeah, I, like it. I like it too. Let me find out. Hey, Let's take a look. Yeah. What do we think? We're happy to grab anything for you. That looks like that might be something that will keep you busy for a while. What do you think? You want that? Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Uh, and let me get you a bookmark, okay? Because you're going to need one for that. <laughs> Ice cream is cute, isn't it? <laughs> I hope you enjoy your book. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Appreciate it. You're welcome. That's so fun. the skeleton cross why didn't it why didn't it i don't know why didn't it because i didn't have the guts oh my gosh <laughs> it's so good all right you probably know this one what do you call a bear with no teeth does that make sense we put this up here and then it goes through it a bear with no teeth <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> a gummy bear. Okay. <laughs> it's spinning. Right, let me make sure the brush is <laughs> Give me a joke. There <laughs> right. you go, night night. Love you, Kendall. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Hannah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright. Let's we'll take this to the baby. See, 
<laughs> Silly goose. Love you. See you in a little bit. Okay. job during your surgery. I had surgery. You had surgery. Why? They put a new line in. Where? It's over there. Do you have a cracker? I'm eating gum. Don't worry. Did you eat her cracker? I did not. Look at this. I got you more crackers, though. And there, I know we're a whole drawer full of them are upstairs, too. You gonna do the... I know, too. The saltine challenge. You do five in a minute. It's like, it's, what? With no drink. Oh, yeah. It's like impossible. Oh, I've never heard that. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Give it a try. Yeah, no, I'm good. Go for it. I'm good. <laughs> you being mean? No. That's what Hannah's supposed to do. <laughs> Who's Hannah? Oh, no. Oh, I don't remember now. Yeah, that's your sister. Well, your eyes still work, so... Dr. What Hannah. do you mean? <laughs> I mean, your eyes still work. You could see somebody. Dr. Cena didn't screw that up. Duh. That would have been quite the miss. But I think he might have swapped your feet around. So you might have to walk backwards. What? All right, she's back from surgery. It's actually been a couple of days now. Um, really uneventful few days. She came out of surgery. She was just a little sore. I'll show you the, the lines here in just a second. And she just really kind of slept coming off of anesthesia and all that stuff the rest of the day. The next day, Yesterday, she did a round of chemo, which was an oral medication, and then a syringe. Really not, no nausea or anything like that. Of course, she had like Zofran and that sort of thing. Otherwise, she really just slept almost all day yesterday, and it was quite uneventful. And that leads us to today, where she's already gotten a round of chemo this morning, and then we're going to start the first bit of the immunotherapy. All right, this is what it looks like. So she's got two lines coming out and i'm gonna move your hand kindle it's coming out like right about here and these will be here let's say sort of semi-permanently they don't get removed those will be with her all the time for the next five or six months just like that so we're gonna to have to find a good way to wrap those up or do something to keep them nice and tidy so that nothing happens to them kendall how are you feeling tired. tired still do you have anything you want to say You're doing a great job. Love you. So I said that this was like our third attempt at trying to do this. So let me kind of catch you guys up on a little bit of that. And I'll tell you where we're at today and the treatments that are happening and all that kind of stuff. Um, originally, we were supposed to be here about a week and a half ago to start the stem cell transplant. You guys saw that video, all the work up, all the scans and tests and all that kind of stuff, making sure that she was sort of cleared and healthy enough to do the stem cell transplant. At the end of that video, you guys saw that, you know, we got a phone call from our doctor saying that they wanted to do some additional testing because there was some recent information about the neuroblastoma uh, and our doctor was in Amsterdam saying, hey, we should pump the brakes for a second. Let's press pause on doing the stem cell transplant right away. I'd like to do a PET scan to see if what's highlighting in the MIBG scan is benign, dead, old cancer cells, or if they are live, actively dividing cancer cells, basically. So she did the PET scan, we waited for those results, and it came back as live, active, dividing cancer cells, which was not exactly what we wanted to hear, but it was nice that we were able to find that when we did. So, so instead of being scheduled to do the stem cell transplant, they wanted her to start two rounds of immunotherapy pretty quickly. And then we ended up in our local emergency room for a couple of days because she had a fever in the middle of Hannah's birthday party. 
Uh, I brought her to the emergency room and they couldn't figure out why she had a fever. So they ran doses of antibiotics and we went back the next day, another dose of antibiotics, and then she was fine for a while. Then we were scheduled to be at the hospital to start this round of immunotherapy instead of the stem cell transplant. And they decided to test all of those things one more time when we got here, just because they immunotherapy is kind of a big deal. So they didn't want to, you know, they wanted to cover all their bases before we started that treatment. And sure enough, she tested positive for COVID. So <laughs> the doctor came in and, He's like, hey, um, I'm gonna pack you guys up and send you home, she's got COVID. And it was like, oh my gosh. And he, he sort of prepared us that that would delay things about two weeks. Um, and then they realized that they were, she was far enough along in the COVID thing to schedule us for another week to come back, test her for COVID. And if it was negative, they already had her on the schedule to place the line and do the treatments and all that kind of stuff. And that brings us to where we are today. Yesterday she got, a round of chemo is a one oral medication, which I actually gave her through a G-tube, and the other was through the syringe that just infused through her port for, what was it, 30 minutes? She tolerated it really well. There's really no side effects to speak of or anything like that. She just, she was still sleepy, and they, and they gave her Benadryl, so she really pretty much slept all day yesterday. Today, she has gotten another dose of those chemo medicines, and then they're gonna start the immunotherapy here shortly so she's going to be loaded up on all kinds of different things on this pump they'll continue to monitor things or load her up with a good bit of morphine before we get started and then we just monitor to see how things are doing you ready to get the show on the road mm -hmm. as we go through this treatment i'll try to remember to do a good job of explaining sort of what the immunotherapy does and how it affects the body and what its job is as well as documenting for you guys like kind of how she's tolerating it and what's happening from there. So that's the update for now. It's been a doozy so far. So here is the update. Um, I knew going into this that I wasn't so sure I was prepared for this treatment and I, I proved to be right. I was not prepared at all for what we had to endure, really for what Kendall had to endure this morning. It was, it was hard on all of us. Kendall has been in a lot of pain. They started the treatment at around 11.40 a.m. It's now about 9 p.m. It took them I don't know, three or four hours, I think, uh, to get the pain under control and to get the levels of morphine right and all this kind of stuff. And the reason this is a painful treatment, I'm gonna explain sort of my understanding of immunotherapy and how it works. There's a cell, it's called the GD2 cell, and the immunotherapy, what it does is it attaches itself to the protein cells within your bloodstream, the fat, the fat cells in your blood, and it locates that and it attacks it and it's there to try to attack the GD2 cell and kill it off which is basically the cancer cell that we're that it's looking for more or less the immunotherapy also attaches itself to nerve cells and it attacks those because I, I guess it doesn't the chemical doesn't know the difference between the two cells so it's attacking this nerve cell which is what's causing the pain. So it started in her lower back. We continue to increase the morphine. They kind of start everything at a low dose, both the immunotherapy drug and the morphine. And they kind of like stair step them up every 30 minutes to an hour. And then they back things down and they sort of find this happy medium of where she's comfortable. But we're also giving the immunotherapy uh, at a rate that isn't gonna take forever because they can run it up to 20 hours, but after that they have to stop and they can run it as fast as 10 hours. So somewhere between 10 and 20 hours is how long this infusion will last. And we ended up starting really low. It stayed really low. I think now we're at a full 10 ml per hour. So it's not a lot. You think about a 10 ml syringe per hour. That's, that's it, but it causes a lot, a lot of pain. So. They've kind of got the levels worked out 
she got comfortable. She's fallen asleep, and she's been asleep for the last probably five hours or so, roughly. And we have to do this over the next four days. So realistically, I think we're really hoping that we can keep her asleep as much as possible for the next four days till we get through the rest of this treatment. So far, it's sucked. And you just feel so helpless as a parent because there's just nothing you can do but like press the bolus button on the morphine every 15 minutes for her and hope that that gives her some relief while they sort of figure these things out. You know, you rub her back, you give her ice, you heat, whatever she wants to try to make her feel comfortable getting her positioned. And this pain just keeps working its way through different parts of the body from the back to the legs to the arms to the head to, I mean, it's your, sort of attacking your entire nervous system throughout the treatment. So it sucks. It's rough. I don't wish anybody to ever have to endure any of that kind of thing with their kid. But I feel grateful that we've got it under control now. If we can maintain this and just get through the next few days, I think we'll be in a pretty good place. Now let me share an interesting fact with you guys. They were setting all this stuff up and on the IV pumps, you know, she's got all kinds of stuff going on. This is the Unitux, this is the immunotherapy, this one is the morphine, and this one is regular IV fluids to keep her hydrated. If you can see, this morphine one has this big, huge case around it. It's got a key. They keep this bad boy locked up and I was like, man, you guys are pretty serious about that morphine. Evidently, unbeknownst to me, People try to steal the morphine out of the pump. or so, It's like, that's crazy, right? That's the craziest thing I ever heard. And they were like, oh, well, you're, you're clearly not a drug addict and you weren't thinking about it. I'm like, definitely not. Um, but yeah, apparently like stealing morphine is a thing. So there's like special codes, there's keys. Apparently there's like Reddit forums and pages about how to hack into these things to get them more. It's bananas. Anyways, I thought that was an interesting fact that crackheads be trying to steal morphine out of an IV pump. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, a long night last night. Um, that immunotherapy treatment ran until about 2 a.m. I don't think I really got to sleep until about 4 a.m. I think it all started initially with trying to get Kendall to pee. That was a that was one thing. I had to bring an ultrasound machine in here, and it's not uncommon for that to happen with all the stuff that she's on. So there was a lot happening with that, and just making sure everything was cool and checking her bladder and giving her medication to help her pee. Her oxygen level started going down at one point uh, in the evening because of all the morphine and stuff. It really kind of like slows down your breathing and, and whatnot. So they had to hook her up to oxygen and you get the monitors beeping about oxygen levels. And so that's like, as a parent, keeps you obviously on very high alert. And then uh, her heart rate started to go up at one time through the evening and the machine was beeping about her heart rate. So it's like, okay, is she in a lot more pain now? It turns out she was spiking a fever, which is again, not an uncommon symptom through this. So then they had to treat her for that and then she threw up and then there's just all these different things sort of happening so I was you know maybe adrenaline running a little bit where it just keeps you awake and you're just on edge um, and that sort of thing so everything sort of really kind of got settled very late in the night or early this morning I guess I should say <clears throat> so I slept from about I don't know four to nine pretty pretty decent so now it, uh, it's almost 10.30 a.m. and they've got chemos going already and we're kind of getting started with the next day of, of stuff here. So chemo will go for a little while and then they'll start the immunotherapy. And now that they've got all the ratios worked out, um, it should go much smoother and be a lot less painful for Kendall. Um, they've already got morphine on board and, and running at the proper level for her. And then they'll start the immunotherapy once chemo is over. Uh, so hopefully everything is chill and Kendall just remains to be sleepy and not in any pain. Update. Today has been a completely different experience than yesterday. Since they got 
all of that stuff dialed in, got the morphine dialed in with the rate of the immunotherapy. Okay. Kendall is doing really well. Hi, Kendall. Hi. What are you doing? Talking to mommy? Sure. She's trying to go get her some snacks from the cafeteria. But she hasn't really complained about any serious pain. She is in a little bit of pain. Her knee hurts a little bit. But yesterday at this point, she was absolutely in tears and pain. And we just were trying to get her to the point where she was comfortable, comfortable enough to fall asleep. And today... She's been asleep and she just woke up a little bit ago. She's hanging out, she's on her iPad, she's watching video games, she wants to eat. Completely different experience now having all of that dialed in. So the next few days look very promising. How are you feeling, Kendall? I'm tired. Very tired. You've been having some crazy dreams, do you know? No. You've said some funny stuff. I think you're imagining things. <laughs> Do you remember being scared of the blanket a minute ago? Huh? <laughs> You've been doing some funny stuff, saying a few funny things. I think the morphine has you feeling a little tipsy. A little goofy. You think? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? You feeling okay? Mm -hmm. You're doing a really good job and I'm really proud of you. They're kicking butt. Found it. That was kind of a, a rare occasion to see her awake and be able to, to sort of interact with her. Uh, she's been sleeping for the last few days since the last update and really pretty uneventful. She had a fever here and there, which is to be expected. She did get a blood transfusion not because her hemoglobin was so low, it was like 8.1. They usually don't do a blood transfusion until transfusion until it gets to about seven, but they were balancing blood pressure and all these different things. And so that's why she got the blood transfusion. Otherwise she's done really pretty well. You know, she's just, she's tolerated it well, mostly because of the levels of morphine and just really kind of wiping her out. And she's been like kind of hallucinating and and having these kind of crazy dreams and it's it's an interesting dynamic to be in because like at the time it's kind of f cute and funny and she's saying funny things and you're like what is she talking about and she kind of is kind of awake but kind of asleep and she doesn't know what I'm talking about if I ask her about it and it's been some funny stuff but again it's an interesting dynamic because it's like it's kind of cute and funny but it is also really sucks that that's the state of mind that she's in so I think the only other positive thing is that I don't know that she'll really remember much of this. At least I hope she doesn't, to be honest. I really hope that it's kind of a, a blurry memory and uh, that sort of thing. So anyways, that's the recent update. Just get through the rest of this. And check this out. This is pretty cool. You know, these organizations and stuff are so cool. They brought by this box. This is like a, it was a virtual summer camp. Thing. and there's like some stuff in here for her you know that she can use to interact with stuff and there's different things going on different days that's kind of the schedule of activities but um, it's just really cool tomorrow they're doing a virtual trip to the aquarium so I assume there will be somebody there kind of walking around the aquarium showing them stuff teaching them things whatever and other kids are on there Unfortunately, I don't know that she'll be able to really participate in any of this because of her state of mind but it's really cool that there's organizations out there doing things like that, keeping kids in mind that are in the hospital, missing out on summer camps at home. At really spending time in children's hospitals will really change your life and the way you think about things and the way you look at the world. So I encourage any of you, if you've never spent time in a, in a children's hospital in particular, to like, See if you can volunteer or do something or uh, drop off toys at Christmas time. Anything that you can do, I, it, it feels really nice to be able to do things like that for kids that uh, are just sort of missing out on normal life. You know what I mean? Anyways, we're just continuing to be grateful. Good morning. Last night sucked. I think I got to bed finally around 4.30 or 5 a.m. as the treatment went on and as we neared the end of the, the dosage, the pain went 
through the roof for Kendall. It just it hit her again really hard like it did in the first few hours of, of all of this, you know, on the first day. And we couldn't figure out why suddenly she was in so much pain and we were, you know, it started in her back and it started radiating up into her neck and her head and her shoulders and her hands and then her legs and um, it sucked. It sucked to watch. It sucked for her to have to experience and it's just this helpless feeling and trying to figure out why is this happening, what can we do about it. We tried increasing the dose of morphine and that didn't seem to touch it a whole lot. Um, she would sort of doze off for a few minutes and then wake up and then in excruciating pain again. So then we just sort of counted down the minutes until that infusion was done. And then finally it was complete and we knew that there was some relief coming after that. And I'm happy to say that we are now done with this first round of immunotherapy. So she's sort of recovering from all of that. Morphine has been turned off, waiting for that to kind of dissipate and for her to stop. She's still hallucinating and saying some funny things. In fact, let me read this to you. Okay, so she said she saw a, a giraffe. First she was pointing to the TV. She was like, what's, what is that on the TV? And we're like, oh, do you see the reflection? She's like, no, it's a, it's a giraffe. It's like, oh, really, what else do you see? She said she saw a cricket on a hot air balloon. And then she said she saw a snake and that there was something hanging from a tree. And as she was describing this, I kept, I was visualizing it more and more. And I was just, in my head, I saw this whole scene. So I was like, I have to write this down. I want her to paint this picture uh, when she's able to. I think it'd be a really cool, kind of a funny piece of art to have from her. So what's next? Um, you know, as I said, the, the, the morphine is wearing off. Um, she continues to get a little bit of oxy to kind of help manage some of the pain without adding more morphine to it. So kind of let those swap out. Um, she's been disconnected from all the things. So the Unitux, uh, the immunotherapy line has been um, disconnected. The morphine line has been disconnected. The heart monitor wires and cables all disconnected. Um, blood pressure cuffs, like she's, only got one thing hooked up now she's just on regular sort of fluids which is nice if disconnected from the hospital a little bit more now she continues to have fevers periodically and before we can leave we've got to be fever free for 24 hours so uh, the last one she had was at 10 a.m. so if we can get through 10 a.m. tomorrow with no fevers then I think we'll get the clear to uh, to get out of here. Everything else has been going well. She's been going to the bathroom and you know all those sorts of things that usually kind of hold us up. Like everything's in a pretty good way. So we're just kind of waiting to ride out the next 24 hours, see how things go, and then hopefully we can get out of here. What's up, beautiful? How are you? I'm good. How are you feeling? I'm tired. Yeah. I'm really proud of you. You did a great job getting through all that treatment. I know it was painful and it sucked, but you're a rock star, you know that? Now, she does have this throw up bag next to her because she has thrown up a couple of times. Uh, I think maybe only a total of three or four times. Is that right? Something like that? I, and I don't know if it was from the chemo or what really caused it, but anyways, nice to see you awake for a minute. You look great. Are you starting to feel any better? Less pain? Yeah. Good. Love you. Love you. Can I get a thumbs up? There we go. There we go. Alright, we made it through the night. Smooth, uneventful, got some rest. No more fevers, so we just have to make it through uh, into the afternoon, I think, without any fevers, and they should let us go home. Kendall's starting to feel more alive, more like herself. She looks great. Starting to eat a little food, some Rice Krispies over here. Did you get some sleep last night? No. You didn't? What happened? You kept waking me up in the middle of the night, taking my blanket off me. Who the nurses were? Yes. Because they, they had to take my blood pressure. Okay, I'm sorry. Other than that, you didn't get any rest? I did not. I got some rest. Other than getting up to go to the bathroom with her a few times. 
All good stuff. Hopefully we get out of here this afternoon. <laughs> Are you smiling? Finally? Huh? You have a little angry face this morning. You made it. Fever free for 24 hours. Ready to go home? Alright, All right, you heard it. We are free to go. We made it 24 hours without a fever. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that I appreciate everyone watching and a bunch of new subscribers recently. Uh, and to say that I hope that these videos either shed some light and bring some education or insight uh, to some of the folks that maybe are coming behind us on this type of a journey, that sharing these experiences may give you some sort of indication of what it might be like to go through these treatments and this journey and that sort of thing. Now, if you guys want to see, you know, Kendall before all the cancer and before all this kind of hospital stuff, make sure you check out some of our RV travel videos from last summer where we traveled all over the country in the RV. Uh, it was a blast, a lot of fun stuff there, but that's it. We're going to load up the room, we're going to get in the car, we're going to head home, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. All right, quick update. We made it home for a couple of days. Uh, we are back in the hospital, different hospital emergency room, sort of unexpectedly. Uh, she remained nauseous and throwing up and uh, had become dehydrated. I tried pumping a lot of fluids with her uh, feeding pump into her G-tube, directly into her stomach, but that wasn't touching it. I mean, she just kept throwing up all the fluids we were pumping in and then just compounds and she gets dehydrated. She you can see she just doesn't look look super great. So we're here in the hospital. We're gonna um, get some get some IV fluids going. Hopefully, just a quick bolus and juice her up and get back ahead of it. And hopefully, we can get back home tonight. Do you want to say anything? Hi. You're gonna feel much better very soon. I promise. Okay. All right. That's it. I love you more. You're the best. Yeah. All right, let's flush these lines.